how do you physically rewrite memories that you have? Well, first of all, you just have to recognize it's flawed, probably isn't even real. Because if you don't make that shift, you're not even going to enter into the process, right? You're going to say, my, my memory is 100% true. So I would encourage you to please read the cognitive science on memory and realize that, no, you don't remember where you were when JFK died. Or you think you know where you were when 9-11 happened, but they've actually interviewed people right when it happened. And then they interviewed people 10 years later, and you, know, and you actually had a note to compare it to. And 10 years later, the story of where they were changes. Sometimes they're in different cities. So you have to start from the proposition that your memory is flawed, and you have to start from the proposition that you're able to rewrite your memories. Because if you start going around telling people, this is the one module I would tell you, don't tell people you do this. If you start going around telling people, oh, the past isn't real, I'm just rewriting my memories. Uh, if you think they judge you for self-help and you have not seen anything yet. This one is a personal thing because it's so different than what people are used to. So here's the way to begin the process of rewriting your memories. One, identify a messed up story in your life. Now, I don't want one that's going to send you into an anxiety spiral or trigger you or, you know, really like ruin you. But think about something that happened to you that was like pretty bad. Now, think about what you learned from that experience and how you grew from that experience. It was really bad that when I was a kid, I couldn't run around the block. And I was always pick last in kickball. By the way, it's a true story. I always was. I had no natural athleticism. I always, I always laugh at people when they, they say, oh, you've you got good genetics or whatever. I'm like, I, I'll show you the pictures of me as a kid. So I could look back with how, you know, when I was a kid. I was you know, a fat kid growing up. I had asthma. Couldn't run around the block without passing out practically. <laughs> right? Just suffocating. It was with asthma. It's kind of a sad memory, right? I suppose so. Not traumatic, because I don't want you thinking about a traumatic memory, but think about a sad memory where you weren't your best. But when I look back at that now, I go, it's amazing that I cured myself of asthma just through force of will. Wow, how many people have cured themselves of asthma just by running and training myself so hard that I would almost suffocate? And I wasn't afraid then of suffocating. And what a great opportunity I had that I wasn't blessed with a lot of gifts other people had. And then when you think about that memory, suddenly now you're not feeling bad about the memory. And then you go through other memories. Other memories come up. Oh, I remember I was, um, yeah, I remember one time, you know, this was me. We ran out of um, soap. So you'd have to use Dawn dish soap in the bath or whatever. But it would irritate my skin really bad. So I remember one day, I believe I was in seventh grade, my homeroom teacher told me I had to go to the bathroom because I had dirty elbows. I had dirt on my elbows. It was kind of embarrassing. Right? It's kind of, kind of a sad thing. And, but I don't think of it as an embarrassing or sad thing. I think well, this is amazing. I had humble roots. This makes me more relatable to people. It shows people what's possible if we really believe in ourselves and we believe in our, in our culture and our country. It's, what a great kind of story that I have that most people don't, don't already have, right? So you just go through memory after memory after memory that's bad. Again, you're not ready for trauma yet. Don't go into like the really dark stuff because that's advanced black belt stuff. Just go into the, oh, you had a bad memory, a challenging thing happened, something that you didn't like about your life, and now think, what did I learn from that, and how did I grow, or what opportunity did that present for me, and how did I grow from it? And Do that every time a memory comes up, every time a bad thing in your life happens, everything, something even in the present happens. Think, well, what, what's the message here from the universe? What's the message here that I really want to get out of this situation? Now, a lot of people are going to go, well, wait a minute, but if you're judging a situation and trying to get a message out of it, then you're not really mindful and everything. Trust me, it'll make a lot more sense. That's why I introduced it. You know, there's a reason I introduced it with that um, Escher picture. Because if you're, I call it, like college boy thinking, because it's usually men who say this especially Western men. Well, you said you should be mindful, but now you're saying that you shouldn't be and you should be doing something else because you expect everything to follow logically. But you realize eventually everything you're learning folds into one sort of collective whole where you can be mindful while you're aware of your mindfulness, even though that's not technically possible. You can be finding a moment or a message in the moment 
even while you're in the moment, you can do this all at once. It takes a lot of practice, and it's a great practice. And when people tell me, what if you're wrong? Right? This is the question that I don't answer it when haters ask it, but if I were to earnestly ask, people go, what if everything you actually have told me is wrong? Okay, it's a, that's a great thought experiment, actually, because that helps you discover first principles. So if what I told you is wrong, you're going to wake up tomorrow and you're going to think you have a shot. You're going to think you have a fighting chance. You're going to think that your actions matter. You're going to think you have control with how you engage with reality. You're going to think that you're able to change reality in various ways. You're going to think that traumatic memories in the past don't matter. You're going to move forward as if you have a life vision. Or what? Or wake up and think nothing matters? To think that wherever you are today is what you deserve? And to think that whatever happened to you when you were a kid or happened to you yesterday is going to be the way you feel for the rest of your life? So if I'm wrong, and you'll see right away just by, you're like, wait a minute. I mean, even by experimenting with the idea that I'm wrong, you realize that even if I'm wrong, I'm not wrong. I can't be wrong because if you wake up every, every day and you feel that better way, then you realize everything I said is true. And you realize that your identity is not defined by your low points. You realize that your identity is nothing more than a collection of stories. And you now realize you have the power and skills you need to rewrite those stories.